All right, come on. Where is the friggin' oh man, I'm all bass backwards. <laughs>
play that stupid song this is my new you know what when you're sitting down it just doesn't quite it kind of chokes up on you it's supposed to be like it I buy a lot of my stuff at truck stops I think it's cool looking and that's really where the rock if you want to go back rock and roll the look it's truckers truckers used to have Elvis modeled himself after a trucker. He was a local truck driver, but, you know, big long haul truckers greased their hair back into a stupid duck tail and that friggin' thing flopping over in the front. And then he did the sideburns. He wore eye makeup. He took it to, you know, the extreme to look more rock and roll than a simple old truck driver. But that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a drag racer, which means going in fast cars like 300 miles an hour, not running down the street dressed up like a woman. I did that in the 80s. Then I wanted to be a truck driver, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe it could be both. And then Kiss came along and blew it for everything. So I'm seeing that this, and it's not the camera's fault, it's the. Uh, Thing is holding the camera up. It's not getting down. I, I'm sure you want to see this guitar. And this is what the funny thing about. I get questioned about every single guitar I play, especially the Les Pauls. That's not a Les Paul Gibson. That's from China. That's not. That's not a uh, Jackson. That's from China. But this. No one questions this guitar because of that. Oh, well, that's right. And the not, and the dots appear to be in the right. No, look, it's got a truss rod cover. His didn't. A lot of people really don't know what to look for. First thing, is there a truss rod cover? And this is flat. Every one of these aftermarket or ones you see now. Hmm. That's not supposed to be angled. His wasn't. Sure. He added uh, Dan Electro. The whole point that him and all the guys that were trying to figure out this bar thing, you know, that uh, they didn't want the strings getting hung up on the nut. Now, I'm an idiot, and I kept the nut in because I'm trying to go for a good tone. So, to me, metal to metal is going to be more metallic sounding, and it is. But if it goes metal to a nut that's been filed out so that strings can go through it easy, then locked here, got no problem. Because it doesn't slip between there and there. And this can, you know, angle, it can do whatever it wants. It doesn't matter. But the guy that made this guitar was J.J. I don't even know his real name. He was a friend of, uh, I don't know now. I thought he was one of my son's friends. My son doesn't know. He's like, I, do, I know a guy. So whatever. Maybe I met him through uh, Ed, don't call me, uh, or Stacy, don't call me Ed Seaver. <laughs> Who worked at the same, at Valley College. That's where this guy was, and... Uh, he heard me talking about getting a custom guitar built. He's like, I've always wanted to have it build a guitar. I said, well, it's a flying V. The only difference between this one, and, it, and this is where I made the mistake. I said, just look at any flying V. Because I, I wasn't really thinking about it either. There's a huge difference between Randy's 
and everybody else's. And you should all know it if you're all Randy guys. The first thing, okay, this is called the neck. This is called the head stock. This is the body. So if you just go, okay, body, neck, head, I just let's call these shoulders, right? This is the body of a, of a Gibson Flying V. That's what he modeled it after, because I told him it's just a Flying V with a weird headstock. So that's what he made me. And I say, make sure the dots are in the right place and the right size. It's very important about the look of the guitar. And he did all the things I told him to. He put this where it should be. He put that where, where it should have been. These, he kind of got mixed up, but we fixed it later. So the knobs were in the right place. Everything's in its right place. It's got the, everything's right. And I put, you know, pre-Sharon being a dick. So mine's all chrome, like he wanted his. Chrome rings, chrome. She made him paint everything black and put black knobs on it to make it look tougher, not so glammy looking, because this was a glam guitar. This was like a hot rodded glam guitar for that Randy designed. And his thing was, is to just come straight out. It was like an arrow. It was like a harpoon, literally. This was the tip, and this was just the wings, and they comes right out. There's hardly any, there's nothing, no, none, nothing going on here. It's just zoop. And this is a lot more pointy. It's a lot more pointed and no shoulders. Got it? And head and shoulders. It's like that. But no one questions me. Oh, is that a sound of all? No. I had one. I might have still one. I don't know. I know I have a Jackson. The Jackson looks like it except the headstock. Uh, flying V. And then I got a custom one. The headstock doesn't look anything like it. In fact, I think it's an Ibanez. But the uh, inlay work is really cool. You know, blah, 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 blah. You haven't heard me talk in a long time, right? I'm trying to figure out if this is also stereo. So tell me, is it?
start playing man because there's one song two songs before that everything just goes into the next young or uh, uh, live fast die young drunk and disorderly it goes into creeping sensation it goes into eternal darkness which is dee -dee 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 -dee, but it sounds way better because it's acoustic and it's like something you a song you like huh and uh, then it goes into another song called Deceiver, which the beginning is supposed to remind you of something else. But it's not exact. It's supposed to just like, I've heard that before. But you got to be an old, you know, like, you know, in the 70s you were a kid and your favorite band was Kiss. And you liked Alice and, you know, Sabbath and Ted, and, but mainly Kiss. And then this is a mainly... Everything is a tribute, and I went back and I actually rewrote some of my first songs that I ever did. The first two, and one being Drunk and Disorderly. Kip, you gotta take that down, or you gotta give me credit on YouTube, otherwise, you're out. You can't claim that as your song. I wrote Drunk and Disorderly in 1984 with Sitting in Denny's with Gene uh, DeLuca. Sit, me and him sitting there at Denny's coming up, you know, and brains are like drunk and disorderly. That's a great song title. Now I got to write a friggin', you know, so game up. And you will hear it because I recorded that and we redid it, and the ending is just heavy as hell. Really, really. <laughs> Thank you. 
it, boys and girls. So, the short story again, I'll tell you, is... Uh, so, you know, this should look no different to you, maybe. I don't know. I haven't adjusted the camera settings. This is a new camera. So, I record. Most of the songs are done. The, most, the song we spent the most time was on was Eternal Darkness. So, the beginning, I wanted to be really cool. Like, really dramatic. So, there's a part... There's a spot in the desert. It's it's a it's called Cedar Pocket. You pull off the road and there's nothing there but these cliffs that go up for thousands of feet. And cactus. And that's it. And hopefully no truck drivers is sleeping. Sometimes they do. That's why I wanted to get there at like 4.30 when the sun was just going behind the cliffs. And you I had light. But it was dark enough to where when I... Okay, so... I have a piece of crap acoustic guitar I bought for $15. I've been planning this shoot for over a year. Shoot. So I, I have my camera. It's got seven and a half hours worth of footage. This is only going to take up five, ten minutes. I know. So, and, you know, and I'm on my way home. I shoot this. I get in the car, and I was going to drive straight home, but I had to stop, pee, you know, sleep a little bit. Pee. So I put the camera on the car. Aiming at the cactus, this weird yellow cactus thing. And I stand in front of the cactus, I get my guitar, and I start playing, you know, the. Like I'm playing the beginning of Eternal Darkness. And da 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 And I'm looking around, and then I just take the guitar. And just start smashing the crap out of it. It was a nice acoustic guitar when it worked. But it literally fell off like a table and snapped the headstock. It's not worth fixing. It only cost 15 bucks, But it looked like it was good from the front. As long as you didn't see this crack in the, and I could hold the headstock in place. Which was held in place with tape. So I did that, smashed the shit out of the guitar. In my pocket, I got lighter fluid and a lighter, a Bic. And in this pocket, I got my Glock 20, or 45. So I think it's a Glock 20, but it's a 45 caliber. It had hollow points in it. I didn't know it had hollow points in this clip. So, and I wanted to get this done quick. So I put the guitar, I lean it up, you know, back against so I got more room I should have done it from the front but I'm gonna have to do it over so anyways do my part laid against the cactus guitar the the thing, camera's still on the thing I get the lighter fluid out I get out of the shot I start squirting it and then flip and throw the lighter at it poof huge flame woof goes up goes up like 10 feet I'm like what the so I get the gun, pop the clip in, bam, 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 bam. Pieces of flying wood are freaking going everywhere. They're on. I'm like, this is turning out freaking awesome. This is gonna be so cool for the beginning of the video. So I just keep shooting until the clip's done, which was one to twelve, I think. I don't know, if, ten. Let's just say it's ten. I don't know what the legal limit is. I didn't. I didn't have that many in there. But the hollow points, when those impact, those are just blowing things to pieces. So it literally blew the fire out, which is cool. And so, good. I grabbed the guitar. I grabbed the few pieces. You know, I'm not going to litter the desert. I love the desert. Pop the truck, uh, trunk open. As I walk by, I grab the camera, throw it in the car lighter fluid gun under the seat go around back put the, the guitar in the trunk my extra bullets uh, some other sh crap shut the trunk go inside I see the camera the mic it disconnected I look at it and I said oh I got it I got it this is gonna be bitching I put the camera over here and I t and I take off because you know that was loud and in that canyon you can hear it sound like a cannon going off so i'm taking off 
because I know some, and as soon as I was leaving, two cars were coming in, like looking around, because they must have heard it from the highway. It's right off the 15, like about a quarter mile. Not smart, but man, I had this plan for, like I said, over a year. I was just pumped. I'm like, fuck, that was great, man. This is great. So <laughs> I'm cruising. We get pulled into a two-lane highway. It took over an hour and a half, almost two hours, just to get through the effing canyon, which is only a couple miles long, and it shoots you out into Nevada, Mesquite. And uh, I drive through there, and then I'm starting to, you know, adrenaline's wearing off, and I'm tired because I didn't get much sleep the night before. I never get sleep on these vacations because I get, I sleep wrong here. So if I got to be out, check out at 11, that gives me enough time to brush my teeth, take a shower, pack all my stuff, get in the car, go somewhere and sleep for a couple more hours because it just doesn't work. So I pulled over and I slept. I got out and this is a truck stop. So I'm right in the middle of like seven eight trucks reefers i pull in reefer refrigerated trucks because i like the, the sound it puts me to sleep ever since i was a kid that's what you know the refrigerator motor going and usually they keep a generator going something the truck engine going just so they have lights tv all that crap in there so i need that and i crack the window and i'm out three hours i go to sleep i wake up i gotta pee i open the door i go pee I come back, get in, and I take off. Oh, crap. It's late. It's 1030. So I get to Mawapa, the Indian reservation. that sells a bunch of fireworks. If you've never been there in the Valley of Fire, Mawapa Reservation, go. They have more fireworks than they could, they could blow up the state if they wanted. So I went in and I bought a couple hundred dollars worth of fireworks. And I talked to this chick because... I'm like, well, listen, they're playing friggin' Motley Crue. She goes, oh, this is a metal, hair metal night. I'm like, why do they call it hair metal? I hate that term. To me, that's a sin. It was way, it had a lot more to do with the hair, or I mean, with the metal, the music, than it did with the hair. And that's why at the end, I didn't puff my hair up so big. I just flopped it, like you see in the profile picture of my, uh, you know, Facebook. That's how I wore my hair. I just, you know, screw it, man. As long as it's black, it looks cool, you know, it's some kind of, 